a dangerous time of year. Dangerous time of year because this is the part of the year where we start to forget what happened last year and we start to focus a lot on the way that these rosters look and what happened through the portal and who has the best hype video and all that. And I, I'm for all that. I think all that is great. I'm for that. I'm drinking the Kool-Aid right along with y'all with these teams. But I think we need to take a proper assessment of who the most hyped teams are in college football heading into 2023. Now, I put out a question on my Twitter page, at JD Piquel, because I believe that our audience that also follows me on Twitter has a phenomenal pulse for the world of college football. And I just said, who is the most hyped team heading into 2023? I didn't say who's the most inappropriately hyped team. I just said, which is the most hyped team in college football? So y'all responded in full force. A lot of these that you responded with, we match up on, but that's another benefit to follow me on Twitter. So listen, we're just going to jump right into this. There's no way around it. This was the number one response that we got on my Twitter page, and that is the University of Texas at Austin is, for my money, right up there with the number one and number two hyped team in the country. And Texas fans, y'all aren't any strangers to this. You understand how this works. There is a certain prestige around that Longhorn logo. There just is, man. There's a certain expectation that comes with being the school in the state. You're a school that's known by the state. It's not University of Texas at Austin. They just call you Texas, and you know who you're talking about. A lot of schools in Texas, but you're referred to as Texas. The branding itself carries some weight with it. So that's the expectation, that's the hype, that's always going to be there. But the reason why there's extra hype this year is because you look at the roster. This is the best roster you've had on campus now in a hot minute. This is a culture now going into year three. This is a quarterback that is probably the most talented quarterback you've had on campus since Colt McCoy. There's all these things that come together that combine with the fact that the conference itself, I think, is pretty wide open. A lot of people picking Texas to win the Big 12 in 2023 before they head out to the SEC. There's a lot that pieces together really well on this roster. And so the people that are saying Texas is hyped for the wrong reasons, I would say, one, you're wrong. But I would say, two, I understand where you're coming from. Because for people that oppose the Texas hype, they're saying it's boy that cried wolf. That's what they're feeling. Boy that cried wolf vibes is how you would explain the opposition to Texas. Because people are saying, well, yeah, Texas has always been talented. They've always been supposed to win that conference. They've always recruited the best. But when does it ever come together? For reasons I just said, the culture, the head coach, the potential at quarterback, and all the skill positions that are a proven commodity now at Texas, I think are reason to be excited. So I'll just say this. The hype around Texas is warranted. It's also unavoidable. But this is the year for the good folks in Austin where you're expecting now some return on investment. Last thing I'll say about Texas, you put in so much investment-wise. Now is the time, now is the year, rather, in year three, where you expect to get back some on that investment in the form of wins. All right, next, next school we got to talk about here, we look no further than Tallahassee, Florida. The Florida State Seminoles were another one of the top responses that we got in regards to the most hyped teams in college football. We'll talk about that in a second. Make sure you're subscribed right here. We talk ball every single day. Y'all are junkies for this sport, just like I am. We're talking about it in May. You're watching a video about it in May. We're, you're watching a live show about it in May. So one, thank you. Two, if you haven't yet joined the community, we'd love to have you a part of this. All right, so thank you in advance for that. As we were saying, FSU, enormous hype. Enormous hype. Everybody and their mother is talking about Florida State being like a, a playoff dark horse. That's kind of the term, right, right? You know, this time of year, you want to talk about dark horses. We did it on this show a couple of days ago. When you're everybody's dark horse pick, are you really a dark horse, right? Are you, are you really a dark horse to play for a national title if everybody has you penciled in in that like third spot? You know, it's a whole conversation. But with Florida State, the excitement comes with you have the most returning production in the entire country, and then you went through the portal and got some other guys. Fentrell Cypress, all ACC corner. Jaheim Bell. A tight end from the SEC, he's listed as a tight end. He played everything for South Carolina last year. You look at Jordan Travis and the, the season he had last year. You look up and down this roster, and same thing we talked about with Texas. They've built to this now at Florida State. There's a lot of excitement at Florida State because of what they did last year. They had a pop year last year, won double-digit ball games. So people in Tallahassee are saying, we won double-digit ball games, 
and we bring the majority of that team back. And we added more pieces to this roster. I didn't even mention Keon Coleman through the portal, who they just got, who's going to be a one-on-one nightmare. It's all sort of lining up for Florida State right here. From the roster perspective, from the culture perspective, from the ACC, like Florida State is now feeling like they should win the ACC, not they can win the ACC. The people in Tallahassee feel like they should win the ACC. So you win the ACC, you win the ACC with one loss. Potentially that one loss comes against LSU in week one. And even the people in Florida State right now are saying, what are you talking about? We're not losing any games this year. Hey, we'll see. I'm excited about it. I'm not picking Florida State to, to lose. I'm just saying you could drop that first game and still potentially finish with one loss, be in the college football playoff, Florida State. The hype is real. I think it's fair, it's fair hype to have about Florida State right now. And there's a reason why the juice around Florida State is the way that it is right now. So Florida State, another team that is receiving a lot of hype that I believe is warranted. Now, let's, uh, let's go ahead and move our way out to Big Ten country. And I want to hang out here for a second. The Michigan Wolverines are one of the most hyped teams in the country. Now, hype kind of has a negative connotation to it. And the connotation is, well, when you say hype, that means they haven't done anything yet. No, 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 no. I just mean there's excitement when I say hype around Michigan. Michigan has done a whole heck of a lot. Now, you look at that resume, back-to-back Big Big Ten champs, back-to-back victors in the most important game of the regular season for them against Ohio State in convincing fashion, might I add, and a lot of pieces back. Blake Corum said, run that back one more year. J.J. McCarthy, another year as a starter. Donovan Edwards, pieces on defense. Continuity at the coordinator position now with Sharon Moore fully taking over the offense. There's a lot here at Michigan that you already know, and that's the reason why there's hype. But the reason why I, I put the hype label on them in a positive way that is fair to say, they have reset the standard at Michigan. Because a couple of years ago, they would have said, great, we beat Ohio State. Cool, man. We're, we're good for the year. You sprinkle on top of that a Big Ten title. You say, beat Ohio State and win the Big Ten? Great. We are happy as can be. But you do that two years in a row, you get to the college football playoff, don't have a win in the college football playoff yet, then you start to say, hmm, well, what else could we pair with this Big Ten title and victory over Ohio State? What else, what else can we get? It's like when you get a 3.9 GPA, for two semesters in a row, there's a point where you're not happy getting a 3.9 GPA anymore. You were happy with it at first. You say, that, great, that's a pretty solid GPA. I'm doing my job. But there's a point where you're like, man, what would it be like to, to have a 4-0? What would it be like if we're Michigan to win a national title again? What would it be like to bring that hardware back to Ann Arbor? That's now the standard they've reset. Because now you talk about it with Michigan, and we talk about it every single time. We talk about the good folks in Ann Arbor with the Wolverines, man. They're not expecting to just win the Big Ten. It's no longer good enough just to beat Ohio State. Now the expectation is national title or bust. That is it. Nothing less than a national championship is acceptable. That's why Jim Harbaugh is not listening to the NFL right now. That's why Blake Corum came back. Like all these things are piecing together now for Michigan, which equates to unfinished business. That's what it is, unfinished business. And so for Michigan, the hype is real, but the hype is around, we got to win a national title. They'll have to go through Georgia to do it, I believe. They'll have to go through a lot of other good teams to do it, Ohio State being one of them. But for them, the mission is the national title. And that's it. They're also top five in returning production for those of you that are interested in keeping track at home. I said we were hanging out in Big Ten country, so we're going to keep doing that. Penn State, the Nittany Lions, they're getting a lot of hype now, and for good reason. Because what would Penn State fans typically say going into last season? Really good roster. Nick Singleton, this time last year, going to be a freshman. We're excited about him, but we just don't know with Sean Clifford. How far can Sean Clifford take us? There was a feeling around Penn State that Sean Clifford was a really good quarterback, but was he a really great quarterback? Was he going to be enough for you to beat Michigan and beat Ohio State? So the eventual answer to that question was, not necessarily was Penn State good enough collectively, Sean Clifford included, to beat Michigan or Ohio State in 2022. Good news for Penn State fans was they won every other game, including the Rose Bowl against Utah. So Penn State now is saying, all right, well, Sean Clifford has now eventually, after 37 years in the saddle, graduated and is going to play for the Green Bay Bay Packers. Excuse me. 
Drew Aller, excuse me, Drew Aller is set to take the reins for the Penn State offense. And it feels like for Penn State fans, they have finally, and I say finally in a positive way, taken the governor off of the car. You love Sean Clifford. Heck, I believe Sean Clifford should get all the credit in the world for bringing Penn State to where they are now. But there's a feeling now that Drew Aller allows that engine offensively to rev a little bit more. Maybe he's going to be able to open up the offense and stretch it vertically with a little bit more consistency, a little bit more precision. He's got a rocket for an arm. We saw that in the spring game. We knew that about him coming out of high school. He was a five-star kid. You pair that with the backfield, Katron Allen, Nick Singleton. They were as advertised as freshmen. Dante Cephas, big time get through the portal from the Mac. You got Abdul Carter, who was a phenom freshman that Charles Power was way ahead of everybody else on in our industry with recruiting. Kalen King was a top 10 player for us. Olu Fashani was going to be a top 10 pick on the offensive line for Penn State this, this past season. He said, you know what? Unfinished business at Penn State. So all these things on paper, again, on paper, that's a big part of the hype, are aligning for Penn State to go and slay the dragon to go beat Ohio State, to go beat Michigan. Like, that's the mission now for Penn State because they've done everything but that up to this point, it feels like, in this recent history for Penn State. And Drew Aller is a very big reason why the hype is what it is in Happy Valley. And it's hard to blame them. I see it, man. When you take off the governor off this car, they have a, t- they have a chance now. Penn State's going to have a chance. So I'm excited to watch that. But I think the receiver position is also something to watch. Keandre Lambert-Smith, will have to play a major role. I already told you about Cephas. He'll have to play a major role. So keep an eye on Penn State and how explosive they can be in that receiver room. But everything around them, man, is going to have a chance to be very, very dynamic as a team. Let's go back to SEC country. Let's talk about another big cap, and that's the Tigers. The Tigers of LSU have enormous hype. And the reason behind that is what they did in year one. I've said this before about Brian Kelly, but I like to think about Brian Kelly in his first year, like a relationship and giving your significant other a Christmas gift. Brian Kelly in year one at LSU, the year that was supposed to be rocky, the year where they were supposed to win seven games in Vegas, that is. They were over under win total, seven wins in Vegas. LSU and Brian Kelly, Brian Kelly gifted LSU a SEC title game appearance his first year there. You gave your significant other a car, your first Christmas together. So you and I both know this now. That second Christmas, there's going to be a lot of hype around it now. You've been together for about two years now. There's been some time. There's, there's been some more development in this relationship. There's been some more development in LSU as a team. If you got a car year one, hey, what you getting me year two? What are you getting me year two? You getting me a, another car? You getting me a jet? You getting me a, a nicer car, a Ferrari? Like, what, what are we doing here for year two? And that's the feeling at LSU right now. They feel like they totally just skipped over all the growing pains, and they very well may have done that. But that's the reason why there's the hype. Big pieces coming back. Jaden Daniels at quarterback being one of them. Harold Perkins, super sophomore. I think one of the best, if not the best, defensive player in the country that went and got Logan Diggs out of the portal. Like They they got some pieces now. They got some pieces to do some really exciting things at LSU. A lot of it's on paper. They'll have to go through Bama to win that side of the SEC. But for LSU, they're like, if we got a car in year one, what you getting us in year two? What are we going to do in year two? So that's why there's excitement. That's why there's hype. And for LSU, it's all warranted. I don't say hype in a negative way, but the hype is absolutely palpable in Baton Rouge. Now, last thing I want to talk about here, we're going to fly out to the West Coast. And I want to talk about a team that is also thrown around when people talk about dark horses winning Power 5 conferences and this, that, and the other. The Washington Huskies. I don't know if we realize this. They won 11 games in 2022. Kalen DeBoer has the boys rolling. Michael Penix Jr., everybody pretty much forgot about after he got hurt at Indiana. He, I believe, led the country or was top two in the country in pass yards last year at Washington. And he's back. And their OC, Bama wanted to talk to him. He's back. There's a lot at Washington that feels like it's lined up perfectly. Not just with Michael Penix Jr., not just with where the roster's at, top 25 in returning production, by the way, but also look at the schedule. A lot of these big games kind of line up nicely for Washington. They get Oregon at home. 
They get Utah at home. Now they go to USC, but guess when they play USC? They play USC the week before USC plays Oregon. That's got a big red flashing light that says, look ahead spot, look ahead spot. They're vulnerable for Washington. They're going to have a chance to make some noise in that Pac-12 conference. There are a lot of people's sneaky pick to be a dark horse for the college football playoff. Here's the wild thing, too. That wouldn't be Washington's first time making the college football playoff. But for Washington, it's all lined up. The excitement is real. And I would love to see Washington, quite frankly, be a team that's in that playoff conversation come November because that would just be fun for the sport, man. But Washington, a lot of juice, a lot of hype right up there. Texas, Florida State, Michigan, Penn State, LSU, all riding the hype train, all warranted hype. And that's the beautiful part about May and the college football calendar. We get to just soak it up. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.